Hey, friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to video number four in our eight to maybe 10 part series, all about getting started with Atmos and Logic. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through taking a stereo project that's been signed off on. This is the stereo mix, and we're gonna flip it into an Atmos project for spatial mixing. And I'll share with you some thoughts and considerations along the way, just to keep in mind. Now, in the first three videos of this series, we mainly focused on gear, in particular, getting set up with a speaker-based system for Atmos production and playback. Now, those details are out of the way. We're going to go all in on Logic, and I recommend for the rest of these videos that you listen with a pair of headphones, as the audio that you'll be hearing from this project will be the binaural rendered version from the Atmos plugin, which is specifically for headphone playback. So you get that sense of height and depth and size and all those details that come with Atmos. Of course, before we dig in, I have to give a shout out to the sponsor of this series, which is IK Multimedia. IK loaned me a set of their iLoud Immersive MTM bundle of speakers so I could conduct this series for you. Now, exactly that, the iLoud Immersive bundle is a bundle of 11 of the very popular iLoud MTM speakers. I gotta say, I think it's a steal for what you get in terms of speakers and technology if you wanna get into Atmos and immersive production. Number one, the iLoud MTM speakers sound fantastic. They have tons of bass to them. It's crazy for their physical size. Number two, they're easy to mount just about anywhere. They're light, they're small, they have built-in threading underneath each speaker so you can just mount them onto something as simple as a microphone stand. And number three, thanks to the built-in arc technology, you can tune each speaker to your space so what you're hearing out of each speaker is something you know you can trust. So I'll include a link in the description below, as well as in this video, which will link to IK's website, which will tell you all about this speaker bundle if you're interested getting into Atmos on a speaker-based system. All right, so let's get into flipping this stereo project into an Atmos project for spatial mixing. Now, the song you'll be hearing for the rest of this series is from a group called the Soviet Dolls, who are longtime friends of mine. I'll also include a link in the description below to the Soviet Dolls website, so you can check out more of their music, which I highly recommend that you do. In fact, let me play you a little bit of this mix right now so you know what we're working with through this series. I'll pick it up maybe right around here. Here we go. Okay, so converting a stereo project in Logic Pro to an Atmos project for spatial mixing is incredibly easy. But before we do that, I highly recommend that you create a new project alternative for your project, which will be the designated Atmos version for your project. To do this, let's go to the taskbar at the top and go over to File, go down to Project Alternatives, and let's create a new alternative. Okay, so let's customize the name of this new project alternative. I'm going to add the name Atmos to the end and click OK. Of course, Logic wants to know, do we want to save any changes we may have made to the original project alternative before we continue onwards with the new project alternative version? And sure, let's save. So if we go back up to the taskbar and go to File and go down to Project Alternatives, we can see we now have two versions. We have the stereo version which is what the band signed off on as the mix. And then we have the second version, which will be the Atmos version. So if we ever need to backtrack to the original stereo version, we can. Now that we have the safety net of having two different versions of this project, one stereo, one Atmos, let's now go back up to the taskbar and go to the mix menu and go down to Dolby Atmos. Once selected, this brings up the audio project settings for our project. Project settings are set on a per project basis. And right here, we have a setting called spatial audio. And when we click, we have the option to flip this session from off to Dolby Atmos. Now it is worth pointing out that Dolby Atmos natively works with two sample rates. That is 48K and 96K. And as you can see, both in the LCD at the top, as well as the sample rate field right here in the audio project settings, my project is set at 44.1 kilohertz. So obviously not one of the two native sample rates for Atmos. However, when we choose Dolby Atmos, Logic under the hood will upsample the project from 44.1 kilohertz up to 48K automatically. 
so no complicated upsampling is required of you. Logic does it all for you. Same thing if your sample rate is set to that of 88.2, Logic will automatically upsample your project once again to 96K. So let's go ahead and set this to Dolby Atmos. But one more detail before we do, let's open the mixer and go all the way to the end of the mixer so we can see what's about to happen with our master channel strip as well as the stereo channel strip. All right, here we go. All right, we get this pop-up. Logic needs to convert our project from stereo to a 7.1.2 surround for mixing and spatial audio format. Here we go. All right, so some things have changed in this project and the master channel strip has been adapted for a surround format. This can be noted by the slightly larger level meters on the master channel strip. The lower half indicates to us all of the surround channels and the upper half is the levels of those height speakers or channels. And we can also see that some channel strips in the mixer have been updated automatically for surround as we work in Atmos. So not only is the output set to surround, but the panner for that channel strip is set to a surround panner, which you can either begin to pan just by clicking and dragging on the panner itself, or you can double click on a surround panner to open a more detailed surround panner plugin. But what's super cool is, is Logic has taken into consideration all the nuance of the routing of my project. So if we close the project settings here, and we take a look around, pretty much every channel strip in this project has remained in a stereo or mono format. And that's because these individual channel strips are routed to track stacks, and the track stacks are routed to auxiliary channel strips. I mean, if we go down to the end of the project, you can even see that my auxiliary channel strips for reverb and delay are even routed to their own track stack. So if we didn't have all this complicated routing, Logic would have converted every channel strip and changed the output with its own surround panner. But thankfully, Logic hasn't done that. And the only channel strips that have been converted to surround are the final channel strips where all of these track stacks are routed to, which I call the submix. Just think of the submix as the stereo output before the stereo output. The only other channel strip to be converted to surround is this parallel compression channel that I have using the Oxford inflator from Sonics, which is basically being used to increase the average volume of this mix. So it's plenty loud as compared to other tracks that one might listen to in a playlist on Spotify or on Apple Music. And of course, lastly, we have the Dolby Atmos plugin, which has been instantiated on the master channel strip. And the Atmos plugin provides us with a renderer for different speaker and playback options. This includes binaural rendering so that you can listen to your Atmos projects on a pair of headphones, so that as you're panning tracks around you and above you and behind you, you get that sense of space and depth and height. And there are several binaural renderers for headphone playback. First, we have Dolby's own renderer. And with Dolby's own renderer, you can specify different binaural renderings for the surround bed, as well as 3D objects for distance. Either you can turn off this option or you can set each sound to feel like it's either near you, midway away from you, or far away from you. Next, we have the Apple Renderer, which is Apple's own proprietary spatial audio presentation as you listen to music from Apple Music on headphones. And there are further iterations of the Apple Spatial Audio Renderer, which can include personalized spatial audio, as well as head tracking, either with or without personalized spatial audio. After that, you can choose to have your Atmos mix rendered for the built-in speakers of your Apple hardware. So if you own a MacBook or an iMac or a studio display that supports Dolby Atmos and spatial audio playback, you could choose this option. And lastly, you can adapt the monitoring format of your Atmos mix for more what I would call classic speaker or surround setups, including either two speakers. So this could be just two speakers in a stereo setup all the way up to 7.1.4, seven surround, one subwoofer, and of course, four height channels. For now, I'm actually going to select 2.0 because the mix is essentially still in stereo. So let's close this for right now. Now, if you remember, on the original stereo output channel, I had a limiter as well as some metering plugins, but the stereo output channel strip is now gone. And those plugins, that limiter and metering plugins are also gone. So for a second, let's reintroduce the limiter that I had on the final output. And I'll just bring in my limiter of choice. And if we take a listen and a look, I'll bring this back up to about negative 0.3. And I'll squash this up and take a look at the meters here.
Okay, so obviously I'm squashing this mix for the purpose of making it loud. As stupid as this is, and we all recognize it, even the artist recognizes it, unfortunately, at the end of the day, when we compare our mixes against other mixes that are professionally mixed and mastered, if our mix is quieter, we innately think that the quieter mix is somehow deficient or not as good as the louder mix. So of course, I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff to maximize the volume of this mix. But here's the thing. With an Atmos mix, there's actually a standard that's required when you upload that ADM BWF master file for distribution. And that loudness standard is an integrated value of negative 18 for the entire song. And Dolby's recommendation for measuring the integrated value is to set the monitoring format to 5.1, click start, and then play your song from beginning to end. Regardless of how many speakers you're working with as you're working on your projects, or if you're working in headphones or anything else. So I'm going to play the loudest section of this song. And let's just take a look at the integrated value just for a brief moment. Okay, so obviously stupid loud. So what we need to do is, is get rid of our limiter for now. Let's also turn off the parallel compression channel and we can even turn off the bus assignment from the submix. And if we go into ozone, we can even turn off the maximizer as well as the other dynamic plugins. Because honestly, none of these modules will be applicable as we work on our Atmos mix. If we listen again, Okay, quieter, so let's reduce the volume of the entire production using the fader. Take a listen again. Okay, so now we're at a decent starting point when we work on our mix. But do keep in mind that every track in this project is eventually being funneled to the submix channel strip, and this could change in a hurry if we start to convert tracks from surround tracks or stereo tracks or mono tracks into 3D objects. In fact, this submix channel strip is not really applicable anymore to our project. So I think for now, I'm gonna take this instance of Ozone because I have applied an EQ to the entire mix. And I think I'm going to apply it to every track stack. And remember, I turned off all the other modules and I'm going to copy this to every track stack and change the output of every one of my track stacks to that of a surround output. So let's check that loudness again. Okay, so we got to reduce once again by 4 dB. Okay, so we can get rid of these two channel strips right here. And at least at this point, we're at a decent starting point to begin working on our Atmos project. Now, the last detail that I want to share with you for today is that we should probably import a bounce of the original stereo mix so that we can reference the stereo mix as we work on our Atmos mix. So I went ahead and bounced a 32-bit floating point file of the stereo mix so I didn't have to apply any dither to this file because Logic can now import 32-bit floating point files. So if we drag it in, right into an empty section in the tracks area. Once we drop that audio file into the project, if we take a look at the channel strip, obviously it's set to a surround channel strip with a surround panner, but we can set the output for the stereo track to a stereo output. And check it out, our stereo mix is now exactly that, a stereo track. If you mute the stereo track and then click on the solo button, you can solo the stereo mix in your project. And then when we click again, the stereo mix goes back to being muted. So this is really handy for referencing your stereo mix as you work on your Atmos mix. And your stereo mix will play out of the left and right speakers. In fact, if we introduce a level meter, and if we solo the stereo mix, and remember, it's going to be a lot louder than the Atmos mix. So let's reduce the level quite a bit and take a listen and a look. Right. 
right? And if we change the Atmos plugin to maybe 7.1.4, if we look again, You can see that's only playing out of the left and right channels. Obviously, the rest of the mix is too because we haven't panned anything yet. But nonetheless, now you can reference your stereo mix as you work on your Atmos mix. All right, in video number five, let's explore the different panner types when working in Atmos in Logic Pro. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.